This is Ego Striker, the home of Nigerian footballers. And with me, I have a special guest. Please introduce yourself to us. Um, good evening now. My name is Chris Uchibe. I play for SL Benfica, Portugal. And of course, also a player for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Thank you for joining me once again, Christy. Um, so, Christy, like I said, today we want to just talk to you very quickly about certain moments in your journey, certain moments in your life, just to talk about, you know, some lows and, you know, mostly the highs. So the first question that I have for you is, you know, as a grassroots player or as a young girl, um, what yeah. are one or two of the challenges that you faced and was it always your dream to play football professionally? Um, yeah. I faced so much challenges when I was coming up as a football player. Mm. And um, it has been always my dream to play football, even at the highest level. When you say you face some challenges, what are some of those challenges, actually? Like, you know, was it just people saying, oh, because you're a girl that you shouldn't play football? Was there anything in particular, maybe just something that you remember that, ah, this was a really tough time for me? Ah, not even that, uh, like, I was a up. Um, playing when I was young, people, they, my friends, they always call me boy gay. Mm. And um, it was so hard for me to buy football shoes because sometimes I play with my bare feet. Mm. And um, my parents, they didn't want me to play football. Mm. So I struggled. Um, the thing I did was, my late mom, she says Akara, like the Akara plantain, mm. in front of our house. So I always help her to sell because we, when I help her, she always give me money. And I always save the money. Mm. And also she do, she always do this um, adashi for me, you know, when the market women when they finish selling, they 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 have people coming to the market to collect like some money to save for them and every month they collect the money back. So she always do that for me. And that is how I got money sometimes to buy boots and also some of the people I have around in my compound, they always talk shit about me. But I don't care. I always move on to play my football. All right, all right. That dream that you had to be a professional footballer, despite all the challenges, what was it that made you to continue to believe? You know, why was it that you continue to believe? Okay. Um, I can't remember, though, but I was this small then. I was watching, I think it's a replay or highlight or two. They showed the game in... I think NTA, Super Falcons, against one country like that. But I think the Super Falcons won them either 8 0 or 5 0. I can't remember. Mm. So I was watching it with my late mom, my brother. So I told my mom that um, she shouldn't worry, mm. that one day she's going to watch me play in the Super Falcons. Mm. But well, it's unfortunately she died before, one year before I played the work on so painful wow. and um, also I keep fighting and um, I think when I finished um, my secondary school my dad they wanted me to go to school but I had to fight and play my football so there's this particular day everyone was registering for Wayek and Neko so my late mom called me and said um, your dad is calling you that I could go to the store and meet him. So I went to the store. My dad gave me money to go and snap passports and also register for my work. So there's one guy in my neighborhood. He's, they called him Jude. They call him Jude. Um, so he was my friend. And I had one coach, Coach Steven. So he was connected to coaching because he, she was, he's a coach now in Ab Abuja. So... I think they called him and say they need a female player that needs to come to Abuja immediately. So they could still even talk to you. So they talked to me. And I have the money with me, my wife. And you know, sometimes the decision you make is either they break you or they make you. Mm. And I was like, 
God help me. This thing I want to do now like this now. Now good one, I believe the good one. So I had to use the money to buy boots. I went to the market. I didn't tell my dad. I didn't tell no one. I buy I bought boots. I bought some JC. And the day I was leaving, I told my late mom that okay, I'm going to Abuja to play football, but don't tell my dad. I'll be going the next morning. So when I go to Abuja, that is when I told my dad. Um I've traveled, I'm in Abuja right now. He was so mad. But I I didn't care at that moment mm. because I just want to play football. Wow. That is just what I want to do. Yeah, that was 2014, mm. I guess so. So yeah, you know that's that's an amazing story to hear. It's unfortunate that your mom didn't get to see see everything come to fruition. But let me ask you this particular question: When you eventually signed that contract, your first ever contract, to to now become professional footballer, it means say somebody is finally now going to start paying you money to play football. How did yeah. it feel, and how did you react? What did you do? Did you celebrate? You know what happened that day. Huh. Well, this one is powerful. Well, it was a hard one for me because when I went to Abuja, the team called um, Capital City, though, well, they don't have money. But they said they were going to pay so such an amount of money, which they didn't pay. So I was earning, they paid me 15500 but at the end of it, the money that would come to my hand is 12500 like, like Nara, some of the players, Nera, Nera. <laughs> some of the players say they play regularly for the team, but that are our second division. So now we promoted the team go Premier. Mm. So I was not happy because I have to feed myself with the money and buy goods for myself, and also I know I have my people at home that I can send money to now. Back then, I was going to send money to them, but it, the money was not that much, so it was painful. Mm. So I guess my next question is, um, when you made that move to Europe, because we know that for many players in Nigeria, you know, the first dream is, I want to play football. When you start playing football, your next dream becomes, I want to move to Europe and play in a tougher division, in a bigger league, in a bigger country. So yeah. same, same question now. When you moved to Europe, you know, when you got that contract, um, I believe it was ACIF you first of all signed for when you moved to Europe. So yeah. how did it feel and how did you react? You know, what did you do after? That story is um, a long one. Well, I have to take you back. You were shorting this so, small small. But... <laughs> sorry, I was shorting out. I was shorting out small. So I was in Asada Amazon before going to ASI. So... We went to the World Cup on a 20 World Cup. I came back from the World Cup. So I, I got injured. That took me out of play for eight months. Wow. I was not okay. So at the six months, I was not okay. So I had to go to River Angeles on the seventh month of my injury. Before going to River Angeles, I was processing the deal to Sweden. The only person that knows I have injury was the person that wanted to take me there, but I was recovering then. Mm. And my boyfriend... So I went to Rivers Angels. When I went to Rivers Angels, I thought I could play, but my my knee was still disturbing me. So one day my friend called my boyfriend and said, You need to talk to Christy. Like her leg is disturbing her. She needs to go and treat her leg. And it's gonna help her if she go treat her leg. So my boyfriend called me and said, Christy, you need to make a decision. Is it that you go to treat your knee? Because you have um visa that is going to come out in the next two weeks mm. i was still battling with everything and inside me i was saying this reading i don't go and finish so i went to Kaduna to treat my leg exactly the two weeks dot so it was the two weeks i left Kaduna to abuja the next day i went to um sweden my leg was still paining now i was still feeling pain then and i have not started rehab so I went to Sweden and it was cold. So one week when I was in Sweden, so the president called the agent that took me there and he said, this girl can't play. Her, her knee is disturbing her, you can see. She cannot run properly. 
So the, the guy was telling them that they should just have patience in me, that Christy, he knows that I'm going to play, that they should just believe in me. So when he told me that, I said, Baba, I don't go figure Nigeria out because you don't care what I play football. Uh, nobody from Nigeria really say I go feel play. So I tried a training session. Before the training, I'll go, I'll do something. After the training, when I get home, I will still do my personal training also. So I had to fight. And um, one month later, I like I was okay and I started playing. And that is it. Amazing. So when when you eventually, you know, got back into full fitness, um, did you feel like ah you've achieved something major? You've achieved something that you've always wanted for a long time. No, I didn't feel that way. Mm, Rather, yeah. I was telling myself that Christy, like, the team I went to, it was just as if I went to do IT. Because football is, football is too big. It's big. Because I went to play second division. I told myself that Christy, even my boyfriend was telling me, Christy, you have not started playing football. You need to put your head down. You need to learn more. Now that you're on your feet, you're back on your feet, you need to play. You need to prove to the world that you can do it and you need to prove to yourself. And you need to make yourself proud, your family proud and everybody proud. So I told myself that this thing I can't play and IT I can't do. So I need to push more. So that is how I push myself and I got to this level where I am now. And I know um keep pushing and I'll keep on pushing. See, I get where I want to be. Mm. Okay, and then AFCON, you know, you made your first WAFCON appearance in 2022, you know, when Nigeria unfortunately finished fourth. But for you, I know it was a personal goal that you had. So can you now just quickly tell us that final one? When you played at the AFCON, you know, the Women's African Conference in Morocco, how did it make you feel? How, how, how did, you know, how did you react? You know, who did you call? <sighs> Well, I was happy and I went to the WAFCON. I didn't call anyone because the thought of me promising my mom that she's going to watch me play at the WAFCON. And unfortunately, she was not there. She wasn't there when I went to the WAFCON. But the most painful part of it was, you know, when you see... Well... <laughs> I was happy then. I went to the WAFCON, but at the same time, I was not happy. Mm, mm. Very interesting. Okay, and then my final question to you before I let you go. Um, if there's anybody that's watching this video that has a dream, you know, that has a goal that they are chasing, whether the person is a footballer that wants to make it pro, whether the person is a yeah. student, you know, that is preparing for a big exam, it might be somebody that wants to get a promotion, you know, at work. What is your own message to somebody out there that is chasing their dream? Um, I'm going to say to them, the viewers out there, um, just chase your dream, follow your dream, believe in yourself, pray hard. Um, it's not easy. There's no journey without competition. There will always be a competition, but when you are doing that, just tell yourself that you are competing with no one. It's just you versus you. It is me versus me. If Chris Chibe can make it, I think you also can do it. You just need to believe in yourself and pray hard. Amazing, amazing, amazing words from Super Falcons and SL Benfica midfielder. And now also centre back, Christy Uchebe. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Christy, for, for joining me, for, for sharing your, your story. Um from zero to, to 100. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you.